<laughs> well, Chantelle, I mean, that looks kind of strange for a Sabbath school. It's a game. I don't know if you've ever played this game. Uh, it's called Jenka, and the objective is you have all of your pieces, and then you keep taking turns, and you keep taking pieces out. Uh, well, right, well, we'll but but you have through. to leave the structure intact. Well, that's that's the idea. really what it's all about, right? You don't want it all so, coming crashing down. I'll take this one here. Well, should we do something daring? Well, okay, wait. I'll play again, and you can have your turn. Huh? Let me try if I pull this out here. If that's at the bottom. Oh, whoa! <laughs> okay, so there's it things at the stand. bottom that you shouldn't mess with. That are the foundations, really. I think I went too close to the foundation yes. there. Well, why don't we turn back to our biblical foundations this morning? Because our lesson good. study is all about, I guess, the foundation of the Bible. It right? is. It is. If you have your Bibles, I hope you have your Bibles with you, or your phones, whatever you use. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. These are the most foundational mm -hmm. texts that we find in Scripture, I think, mm -hmm. because it's about the beginning. It even starts off with the beginning. Shall I read it? Mm -hmm. Genesis 1, verses 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. There's such beautiful imagery here. And, and it really is beautiful uh, with the Spirit of God hovering like a, like a bird mm -hmm. over the waters. It's it's, it's beautiful, but um, you'd think, um, I mean, it's particularly beautiful, but you think there's lots of other cultures mm. uh, that have origin myths. I'm thinking of Rome, for instance, where they yeah. have... These the, two young uh, twins that get suckled by that wolf, I think, Romulus and Ramos, if I remember correctly from my Latin classes. <laughs> and those are good myths. And I think some people think, even maybe Christians definitely non-Christians, that this story is a myth, okay. some sort of origin myth. Uh -huh. how, how should we respond to them? How would we respond to this myth of Genesis? Well, I, I don't know why you ask me, but I'll try to, <laughs> to give an answer, Chantel. Um, if this is a myth, how can I trust the rest that follows after Genesis 1 or 2 or 3? Mm -hmm. How can I trust this? Now, Interestingly, there are differences, there are similarities. Some of the stories from the ancient Near East, uh, they have some similar elements, but there are also significant differences. The one key difference is that God seems to create out of nothing mm -hmm. because there was void. Mm -hmm. In Hebrew, it's tohu va bohu. That means void and emptiness. There's nothing there. It's chaos. Say that again. It sounds really Tohu nice. va bohu. Huh? Yeah. It's not tofu, but it's tohu. <laughs> <laughs> and Whereas in most other ancient Eastern creation myths, the gods make something out of something that's mm. already existing. They change it. So God is really standing at the beginning of everything in the biblical account. There's nothing that he worked with. Okay, so we've got, we've got God at the beginning. Mm -hmm. But there is a tendency nowadays and... In, in Christianity and even creeping into Adventism mm -hmm. uh, on some quarters to say, okay, let's combine. Let's say, let's put God in creation, but let's also use what we see as scientific evidence, mm. um, evolutionary theory, and let's put it together and say, okay, God did create but it was a long process. It was an evolutionary process that God used to create. Do you think we can really combine this? Well, it, many people have tried this, you know. But think about the logic behind it. If God used evolution, principles of evolution, for creating the world, maybe a thousand years, maybe a million years per years per per day, maybe a billion years per day. I don't know. You know, most evolutionists are not agreed on how long it took. The times really yes. vary, yeah. If that's true, 
what would that say about God? The character of God. Would he use death? Because evolution is really foundational. Is you know the strongest, the fittest will survive. Death is inevitable. And that's actually a good thing. It's a good thing because it will it help us to the, better. the healthy ones, the stronger ones. That's mm. that's the the mindset, the philosophy of of evolution. What does it say about God if if he uses this way? The Bible clearly states he didn't mm -hmm. because. They speak about morning and evening and days. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very literal, Genesis 1. This morning and evening seems to be implying that they are very, very literal days. 24-hour literal be, days, what right. What would be the difference between this, mm -hmm. in, maybe linguistically or whatever, yes. to, to more symbolic times? Because we've got lots of sim symbolic times. I mean, we were studying... Daniel. Uh, Daniel, where we had long time periods denoted by days. Yes, although it doesn't say days there. It okay. says mornings and evenings there, or evenings and mornings as well, similar to, to Genesis. Now, interestingly, Bible scholars will tell us, and um, when you have the word for day in Hebrew, yom, and you combine it with a numeral, okay. one or first, it could be a numeral, an ordinal, or a cardinal number, okay. And um, it always references literal 24-hour days. Mm -hmm. One, two, five days, ten days, something like this. Unless there are other linguistic elements connected to it, a preposition, adjectives that describe more the day. And right. then they could be found in symbolic context. But large majority of cases, always when they are together with mm -hmm. a number, it's literal. And that's what we have. Day one, it says in Hebrew. Day two, day three, day four, day five, etc. In, in Genesis 1. So, very literal days that we can't mistake, mm -hmm. that we've got definitely. And we, let's go back a little bit more to talk about um, evolution and, and trying to embrace both. I, I, I think that's important, Chantal. Um, we live in a world that is science-based. Right. And we are very happy right now. We live in a <laughs> pandemic and we have scientists race mm -hmm. thousands, ten thousands, maybe millions of scientists to race for to find scientifically by Cures. trial and error, a, a, you know, a vaccine mm -hmm. or a way to stop this virus. And mm -hmm. um, we're grateful for that. I think Christians are not science hostile. Okay. You know, they, they don't. We're not anti science. We're not anti science. At the same time, we take God first. Science has, has its boundaries. Science is based on the laws that God created in Genesis 1 and 2, in the creation that God gave. But revelation always has precedence. Okay, and, and this is, I mean, this is an event that you can't scientifically. Uh, we didn't have anybody observing this. Not really, no. This, Moses this is going to have to wasn't be... there. He must have received that by in a vision. This, we're going to have to take this on faith. Yes. As the foundation. But mm -hmm. we'll, I think we're going to speak a little bit more about that in our lesson. Mm -hmm. But there's some other things that, that get affected if we, if we take Genesis, if we combine evolutionary theory mm -hmm. in with, with, with the biblical history. It really foggies the water and I think it pulls uh, some basic building blocks out. Mm -hmm. We said God's character. Yes. We've, we, we have God's character that comes a little bit dubious over here. God using death. A long process. And suffering, because it's not just death, but there's entire populations disappearing of, of yes, species, species, you know. Uh, which is a strange way to yes. create. Well, using I, I think it doesn't make sense when we look at First John 1, uh, 4 mm -hmm. verse 8, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think it is. Let's, let's go to that, to the New Testament. First John, I always struggle to find John. The little book's right at the end. That's right. <laughs> okay. Here we are, chapter 4, 1 John 4, 4 verse 4, 8. Verse eight. Mm -hmm. And it's a well-known text. I'm sure we all have read this mm -hmm. or heard this before. He who does not love, it says, does not know God, for God is love. I, I think this is the mm -hmm. shortest description of who God is and what his character is. He is love. And love cannot be reconciled with, with, a, death. with death 
using death as a means of creating a world. A positive out of it. Yes. Okay, it's really the opposite to what God is. Mm -hmm. God is life. God is love. And evolutionary processes are really the opposite of that. Right. But it, it affects our, other, other, the, our view of God. And I think it goes on to affect um, our belief in sin. Hmm. Because we, our, Genesis, our first chapters of Genesis clearly tell us how sin comes in comes into being Jap uh, chapter three chapter three right it's a very specific time it's a specific event there's this tree mm -hmm. and we have Ad uh, eve and then adam actually disobeying god consciously making a decision to disobey god uh if we go back to a, a theistic evolutionary model what's that how's that going to work what's the theistic evolution that's saying well god uses evolution okay to create so he's still involved, but he's using kind of mm -hmm. the principles of evolution. evolution. Uh -huh. And especially if we look at the creation of man, at what stage does man become a moral being with, with, the, with the ability now, to choose? Now, if we go to, to, to Genesis chapter 1 again, mm -hmm. and we kind of fly over the descriptions of each day, 24-hour day mm -hmm. and God structures it you know he sets up the stage there's land there's a firmament there's water there's the separation and then he fills the next three days you know mm -hmm. from day four five six he fills it with human beings with life with light um, at the end of every day maybe we should read okay. read this on the first day um, there was the first day, yes. the second day. Oh, it starts on... Let's read it. Verse 9. Verse 9 here. Verse 10. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the water he called seas. And God saw... And what does it say there? That it was good. It, it was good. Th there, is, there is a quality in there. How, how can creation be good if, you know, if it doesn't reflect truly on the character of the creator right. so so if god is love what we mm. that we read if god is truly the one who cares about us loves us that's what love is a commitment then these creation days must be good there must be a good creation it mm -hmm. can't be mixed with death and dying and suffering in there yeah no definitely mm -hmm. and we were talking also about the actual sin coming in mm. Um, sin is also, I mean, our whole Bible is really about this conflict between good and evil, between God and Satan, mm -hmm. uh, all the way through the whole plan of salvation. Uh, it's also based on the fall over here. Right. And if we have a long evolutionary model, mm -hmm. where does sin come from? How does sin come in? How do people make when are they capable of making choices right. and having a free will? So I, it's, it's not just the creation myth that we're talking about here. We're talking about the basics like sin, mm -hmm. like salvation. Why mm -hmm. do we need a savior? Right. And the whole rest of the Bible. Over and, here. and there are many more elements that are so foundational. I mm. mean, talking about pulling down mm -hmm. that tower um, that are this that are part and parcel of creation, family, marriage. Yes. You know, there's a creation of mm -hmm. two human beings, male and female, in the image of God. We're going to talk a little yeah. bit more about that. Um, society well, as a whole. Let's go back. Mm -hmm. You spoke about the image of God, but let's go back and talk a little bit about God. We've said God is love. Uh -huh. What else does our first chapters of Genesis tell us about so God. about theology yeah you know that's the theology. you know what what can we learn about God that's oh. theology really the study of God and I think we can learn that he's not alone mm. he is part of a community I think there's a hint of the Trinity there if you if you look there in verse 2 the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep mm -hmm. and the spirit of God now in my version mm -hmm. it's that's capital spirit. spirit. Mm -hmm. That's an indication, obviously an interpretation that this spirit, the word for spirit there in Hebrew, that this refers to God's spirit that we find all over the Bible, both in the Old and in the New Testament. 
But let's go to the New Testament. Wait, before we go there, yeah. in Genesis 1, there's another clue. But maybe I'm wrong linguistically. Okay. But for oh, me, that's yes. always been a big clue. Verse 26, 26. When it says, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of the sea. There's that us in there. There's a hint of more than one. Uh -huh. It doesn't really say Trinity yet, but it's more than one. one. Now, if we go to the New Testament, we have a very mm. clear description or attribution of, of the creation in John chapter 1. I find this text quite mind-boggling. Which one? John chapter 1? Mm -hmm. Okay. John chapter 1 verses 1 to 3. It sounds like Genesis 1 verses 1 yes. to 3. It's, it's kind of the starting you know, the, the shot that's taking racing off for the plan of salvation as well. It starts with in the beginning as well. In the beginning mm -hmm. was the Word, capital, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Mm -hmm. That's the Logos in Greek. He was, so it's a personal word, it's not just mm -hmm. a, a mm -hmm. principle. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing, nothing was made that was made. Mm -hmm. And then in verse 14, and the word, now we mm -hmm. know the identity of this word, became flesh and dwelt among, uh, among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So there's a clear identification. No Jesus is that word. So if it, Genesis pins God the Father, yes. we, God the Spirit and God the Son in creation and, and, firmly and, here and, and that reflects a little bit or anticipates mm -hmm. a little bit already the community that god creates in human beings mm -hmm. because he doesn't just create one human being mm -hmm. and says well the next ones will come out of eggs yes they have two yes and they are reflective of this community within the godhead mm -hmm. that needs we need each well, other speaking about com community mm -hmm. Um, um, my thoughts just jump to uh, connection as well. Uh, the argument is often made that there's a God of the Old Testament and a God of the New Testament. Okay. That the God of the Old Testament is kind of, you know, the mean God and the God of the New Testament is the nice God. And, you know, the Old Testament is for the Jews, the New Testament is for the Christians. Mm -hmm. But this kind of blows that idea right because out of the water. Because all were involved. Jesus, New mm -hmm. Testament representation, you know, the expression of God's love is right there mm -hmm. in the beginning. And he's, we find actually footsteps of him all, all over the over. Old Testament. Yeah. And so there's this, there's this unity mm -hmm. of the Godhead in purpose throughout salvation history. Mm. They're working together for us. But we, you touched on, and I, I think that's fascinating, a little bit of this community aspect. Maybe, mm. uh, I mean, we read it. The image of God, right? No, maybe yes. we didn't read it. Yet, Let's right? read it. Let's Let's read verse that. 27. Genesis chapter 1. 1, verse 27. Verse 27. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. And then he said, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Okay. Actually, in verse 26, mm -hmm. when they say, let us make man in our image according to our likeness, it uses two Hebrew words there. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, I, I love the way also how Ellen White hints at that. Um, there's two elements of this. There's this moral capacity but that's also the physical um capacity. Capac not capacity that's the wrong word the image that we have mm. now i don't know that god looks like me or you hopefully not <laughs> <laughs> he looks much better and you know both of us were made you male and female were made in his image so it's much bigger, it's bigger. but physicality is not something that's evil mm. material in the original creation is positive not mm -hmm. evil that's kind of greek thinking you know that where we say you only the soul is the good thing the body is the bad thing physicality is the bad thing 
So it brings this very, and which ties in, of course, to a biblical understanding of what a soul is as being a totality. Chantal, what do you think, well. what else, what other elements are, are in there when it says in our likeness, according to our image? What, referring the image to the, of God. Yeah, what, does, what else does it involve? What makes us different? Well, for me, immediately, <laughs> I think of, of language. Okay. I mean, animals communicate, mm -hmm. and we discover more and more about fairly sophisticated forms of communication. Mm -hmm. But um, we have, as human beings, an abstract thinking ability and language ability, which linguists will tell you is very, very unique. Hmm. And I think that's already put right here where the first task that man is given mm -hmm. is to name, to name. things. Uh, and, and, you know, God does everything by speaking, except for man, which he forms mm -hmm. out and then breathes the breath of life. So we've got this reflection, a little reflection. I mean, we're not God, mm -hmm. but with little reflections, God says to man, good. Now you can try doing a little bit of something that I do and, too. And we know that language is growing, you mm -hmm. know, language is developing. We, mm -hmm. we understand more when we describe it. But there's, there's more. I, you know, one thing that I find always mm -hmm. fascinating is that the Bible said it was good mm -hmm. or very good at, you know, mm -hmm. at the end of creation. For me, that's more than just it works, mm -hmm. more than functional. You know, it, mm -hmm. it all worked well together. You know, now it's like a clockwork. Work that'll just work. But it's okay. also the aesthetics. I think mm -hmm. being created in the likeness and the image of God means there's a sense of beauty and, mm. and, and, and aesthetics that God loves, obviously. I mean, why would he create a giraffe, yeah. you know, with this long head? It doesn't <laughs> look so disproportional, but yet it's, it's, so it's beautiful. beautiful. Yes. Why would he create, you know, different colors of flowers, mm. different shapes? I mean, it's spring right now, or it's the end of spring. We can still see all these flowers around us. Mm. So that the, the sense of beauty, I think, is part of being created. And then obviously, choice. Mm, freedom of choice. Freedom of choice. Being a moral being. Mm -hmm. God created us very high risk. Yeah. Because in us, I mean, he, he knows the end from the beginning. In us, he recognized that Adam and Eve and everybody following, including mm -hmm. Gerald and Chantal, will choose against him. And yet, he's, he still created us. I mean... Mm -hmm. That's something that is unfathomable. That's just the expression of his love, I think. And, well, I guess another important aspect that our lesson touches on mm -hmm. um, with this reflecting, God blesses the seventh day yes. at the end. Mm -hmm. God hallows it. He makes something special, a special link between humanity and the Godhead maybe a time to reflect each other, for God to enjoy our company and mm -hmm. we to enjoy God's company. Mm -hmm. So we have the beginning here. We also have, have the Sabbath. And the Sabbath, of course, is an extremely important motive. Mm. Can, can, can I read it? Yeah, please, please, please. Genesis chapter 2, if you have your Bibles, Genesis mm. chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And yet... There's still something that needs to be. That's the crowning aspect of those seventh day. Mm -hmm. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done, and he rested, rested. on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. I don't know how many times there's rest. I think four times or five mm -hmm. times. Why did God wanted to rest? Well, it's definitely, I mean, it's not a tired rest. Mm. I know when I get to Sabbath, as I'm sure you do, we're just plain tired. I don't know, but in this time of social distancing, a person's even more tired. Yes, too many Zoom meetings. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so I don't think it's an element of tired rest. Mm -hmm. I think it's more an element of, or definitely part of it, is a memorial. Now we're coming to, I believe this weekend, we have Memorial Day. Yeah, Monday. A, a time to, mm. to think of a specific, specific people, specific events, 
that we don't forget them in mm. our history. Mm-hmm. So I think this part, a big part of this rest is a memorial rest, a help to remember. Well, would it also be, you know, resting usually means I'm not doing anything. Mm. I mean, that's, mm. that's the notion of rest. And if we think about already following Genesis chapter 3, the mm-hmm. fall and sin and God's plan of salvation, it reminds us every seventh day we have to stop. Mm-hmm. Physically, yes, I need to, you know, you mm-hmm. said you're tired. I'm tired too. I'm, you know, kind of <laughs> sinking into bed at 8.30 or 9 o'clock on Friday night. Yeah. But it is even more important that I rest in my striving to be good. I can't. Mm-hmm. I come again, look in the mirror of God's word and I say, Lord, mm-hmm. I need to hang on to you. You mm-hmm. need to do that in me, transform me, do the work that you want me to do because there is something in me that you put into me that was created yes. in your image and likeness. It reminds me of a, a, a story that I actually read uh, about mountain rescues. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, they, when people fall down cliffs mm-hmm. and they need to bring in the, the air rescue and mm-hmm. the helicopters. And then they, they, you have someone coming down dangerously from the helicopter uh, to the person who needs rescuing and bringing the, the stretcher mm-hmm. down. Then they put the person, they roll the injured person in there and strap them in. And apparently sometimes it's really difficult to do that because all the person has to do is just lie there. Mm. They've got to rest. And apparently it's hard for people to do that. They want to hang on to something which makes it more dangerous. Or help even. Or they want to help. Mm-hmm. And all of that just complicates things because when you've been rescued, mm-hmm. um, you, you just have to rest. Mm. You can't try and save yourself. So I think that's probably an important aspect of Sabbath mm-hmm. that maybe we miss. Mm. Some people think Sabbath keeping is part of the self-help. Mm-hmm. Uh, to, to, to get to heaven mm-hmm. or to make myself better. Whereas perhaps God already said, no, this is, this is the memorial to the fact to that my you help. can't help yourself. Right. That you have to rest in me. The, here. That salvation is something that happens outside of us, mm-hmm. that you need to hang on to me. Right. And maybe that's because remember the first Sabbath, Adam and Eve alive, they, they were spending time with with God Mm -hmm. and personal time. I don't know what they did. I'd love to (laughs) see that and the video and, you know, whatever. It wasn't a formal church service. They didn't sing a hymn. I'm (laughs) sure they didn't. I think they sat together. They kind of looked with big eyes at the world around them. And God was just enjoying time with with his creation. Wow. But we've come a long way, haven't we? Mm -hmm. But Sabbath is still that invitation to, mm. to get back to, to that rest. But, but there's something, we talked about mm. it already, but there's something else that's kind of so foundational. We remember we mm. started off here with pulling right at the bottom and it all fell over. Mm. So foundational and that's family, right. marriage. Right. Marriage is something that God institutes. Right in the beginning. Right in the beginning. Mm. Because he, he brings to Adam in chapter 2, he brings to Adam Eve. Mm-hmm. And they become one. That's the, the verse that I just think I think is really good, especially now. <laughs> Which one <laughs> is that? Social distancing and uh-huh. all of us feeling our isolation. Genesis two, verse eighteen. Yes. Genesis two, verse eighteen. In context here, Adam has everything. He has everything. He's got the world to roam all over. He's got a beautiful garden, home. He's got the animals. He's got. God for he, he's got a job. He's got he's, a job. He's naming, you know. He's done all he's this. He's the steward. And yet God says in 2 verse 18, the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a suitable helper for him. Hmm. Over here. So it's already even in Eden, which is perfect. God says, and I'm thinking in context of, of community, God saying, man cannot reflect our image mm. properly without being alone yes without the other he needs more yes there need to be 
There needs to be community. There needs to be family. And obviously this is male and female. Now we live in a time where, you know, marriage is kind of threatened in a sense because, you know, Mm -hmm. male and male, female, female. But this is fairly clear. And besides the fact that we would not survive. That's true. Um, And I think perhaps our debates and our arguments about marriage... Mm. Uh, what constitute marriage, uh, constitutes marriage and, and we look at it as often as, oh, it must be love. If you love anything or mm-hmm. anyone, uh, you should be able to marry them. Um, in part, times past, eras past, marriage was all about economic security mm-hmm. and you married for economic security. Um, but the original plan for marriage, if we look Mm -hmm. at this context, is reflecting God's image. Mm -hmm. And when we mess around with whatever other things we think are important to to put into the marriage equation, if it's not something that can help to to reflect and restore God's mm -hmm. image, Mm -hmm. then it's not marriage as God intended it. And I guess that's a it's a really important important element. Now, marriage can be hell as well, mm-hmm. and I I think we 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 know people that have suffered that mm-hmm. maybe have ended up in divorce, mm-hmm. have been reduced. Uh, I often say to our girls, yeah, uh, I say, look, marriage can duplicate you, or, or it you. can half you, mm-hmm. and distract and and, and destroy you. Mm-hmm. So be wise. Mm-hmm. To make that to make that decision, decision. Mm-hmm. and it, it, it's beautiful in its simplest simplicity here how God creates male and female. Um, this is before the fall, of course, and it's this harmony, this community, this working together uh, that we both need each other to to reflect God. Mm-hmm. And we will need family. We will need children. We will need in an imperfect world. We will need community. Right. And I think that's part of what we're missing at the moment. Our church family. Yes. Where we make up. Because for many of us are single. Mm -hmm. And in our church family, we find the help that we need to reflect God's image in a more balanced way. Mm -hmm. If we don't have children, if we don't have parents, that's all of those roles that we can find Mm -hmm. in in our our family Mm -hmm. to, to help us as a community. Uh, reflect God's God better. Okay, well, I, yeah. I must say, mm. I, I love thinking about creation. Mm. I think, and we, we do that in a context of interpreting the Bible. Right. Yeah, you know, at the same time, we do that knowing that without mm. these two chapters, you know, or three chapters, the rest doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. We're looking forward because after chapter three, suddenly, the Everything perfect mm-hmm. perfection of Eden is destroyed. Mm-hmm. Sin has entered. Mm-hmm. And with that, this conflict that was in the universe suddenly r- arrives on planet Earth and it changed everything. Mm-hmm. Now, Chantal, when, when we think about creation, now creation appears all over the Bible. Mm-hmm. There's references to creation in every biblical book and not just one. Even in Revelation? Even in the book of Revelation because there is a new creation. Right. And plus there's right. many more. Actually, yep. I, actually, I have a paper that I wrote <laughs> on, on creation in the book of Revelation, which mm-hmm. is, wow, mind-boggling. Just mm-hmm. if you look at language used there, that mm-hmm. refers back to Genesis 1 and 2. But let's go to the big picture. Mm-hmm. Now, there's... Creation, there's the fall, there's sin, and God makes a promise. Mm -hmm. Jesus comes, the plan of salvation becomes reality. Jesus dies on the cross. What is the connection between creation and this plan of salvation? Well, the very big picture Mm -hmm. is creation and recreation. Okay. And the recreation is taking place when we accept Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's taking place on a on a small level. That's Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians, right? Chapter five, verse seventeen, I think it is. 
Let me just have a quick look. Where God is recreating us, uh, where we become new creatures, where the old has passed away. That's right. And God is making us new. Let's read that. uh, Mm -hmm. I love this text because it's, it's a text offering us hope. What, what verse is it? Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17. Seven Corinthians. Second chapter, Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter five, mm-hmm. verse 17. You go ahead and read it. My Shall I? Yeah. Okay. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new, and that's the Greek word for creation. Right. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. It's a reality. Mm -hmm. Paul describes that it's a reality. It's a new creation. It's not perfect, but it's a new creation. The direction has changed. You're going in, we turn around, you know, going in the right direction. But there's more to recreation. We have this recreation that begins now, Mm -hmm. but it will only reach its completion at the second coming. Hmm. When we get new, well, at least with us, I guess at the third coming, we have the real thing where our whole earth is it's made recreated, new yes. and recreated. Mm-hmm. But where we get our new bodies, where we have resurrection of the dead, we have the undoing of sin yes. again and, and restoring and back to, back to this wonderful creation time again. So it is, it is a strong theme that goes all the way through. Um, we cannot... We cannot cut creation out of no. out of out of our Bible. We will not be able to interpret our Bible. We will not be able to understand our Bible without creation. Hmm. We won't be able to understand God, for that matter, with, without creation. And we talked about the character of God that comes out that so you know is displayed on full display when you study creation yeah. as. A little literal event you know the mm-hmm. the one who speaks life into existence i i love this text we should read this i yes, think as yes, we kind we of definitely. wrapping up here okay um i i love this text in first Cor- uh, thessalonians oh yes the letter that he wrote to the thessalonian church mm-hmm. Th- first thessalonian chapter 4 13 to 18 and maybe that's the new creation that we really really anticipating well maybe before we read that Mm -hmm. let me add for for those uh, i remember someone saying to me oh i find it so difficult to believe that god created all of this just by speaking Mm -hmm. and that it all just came into being um it's so hard to make that jump of faith Mm -hmm. but without that jump of faith how am I going to believe this? In other words, the first cre- I mean, the creation described mm. in Genesis How is I- the presupposition to trusting God that he really can do the new creation. creation. I mean, otherwise... That he'll come again. Exactly. I mean, we're Seventh-day Adventists. Mm-hmm. That, that, that's what we are. That's what history is just speeding forward towards is this new creation, the second coming. As we see things disintegrate around us, this is our hope. Mm. This is what we look forward to. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. We often read this in the context of a funeral mm-hmm. because we want to communicate comfort. comfort and hope. And it's great for that. And I think it also applies in the context of creation because this is recreation. Mm. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. And we all have people that we loved and that have fallen asleep. Mm. I know, you know, everyone in our church has experienced that. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord. So it's, he, he, God whispered it really to him. He says, this is not just my idea. This is God speaking here. Mm-hmm. That we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will be by no means precede those who are asleep. Mm-hmm. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. That's the 
new creation. New creation. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And, and thus we yeah. shall always be with the Lord. Encourage one another with these words. And that's, I think that's what we need. Yes. We need that encouragement in a time of crisis, in a time of separation, in mm -hmm. a time of many, many people dying. Mm -hmm. I mean, we get bombarded with these numbers that thousands of people every day have perished, mm -hmm. have succumbed to this virus. But there is the hope of a recreation, mm -hmm. a new creation, because we know that God's original creation truly happened. This foundational event helps us to build, build something strong. that's much more solid than what we did mm. at the beginning. Something that will stand any storm, any amount of tugging. Shani, shall we have a word of prayer? Yes. And then don't go away because I know we're going to have a special feature right after that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, we're so grateful for your words. In your word, you tell us that there was a beginning. That life on this planet did not just originate by chance or by suffering or by the death of billions of creatures. No, you spoke it into existence. You spoke, you created us putting hands, shaping human beings and giving them life. Thank you for that, Lord. And thank you for the Sabbath that yeah. was the crowning final creation of, of this special week reminding us again and again that we need to rest in you. We can't produce anything that's worthwhile, that keeps us in your good books, but we can hide behind Jesus. Thank you for the promise of the resurrection and a new creation. We love you. We commit this day to you in Jesus' name. Amen.